Checkmate Life Month. Here to tell us more about the importance of registering as an organ donor is Dr. Richard Gilray with Intermountain Medical Center. Dr. Great to have you with us. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you very much. Let's start about. Let's start off with the waiting list, both on a national level and state level. What are we looking at? So we're looking at about 115,000 people who are waiting for an organ, and 75,000 of them are actively waiting. Wow, that's a lot of people. That's nationally? That's nationally. Now, okay. when we look at ourselves locally, we have more than 500 people here waiting. Mm -hmm. And the critical part that's waiting for a liver, that's waiting for a kidney, that's waiting for a heart, that's waiting for lungs, or sometimes waiting for more than one organ. Yeah, that's a, a lot of people. And of course, they're at risk of losing their life. Well, if you look at liver transplant, for instance, two out of every five people listed never get the opportunity. And it's a supply-demand mismatch. Sure. We add more people to the list than we have a transplant because we have one thing that we miss, donors. And donor awareness is the discussion that this month is to focus upon. Yeah, let's talk more about that. What are you doing at Intermental Intermountain Medical Center to help build awareness. So what we've done in our center is we've identified all of those people who could potentially be donors and we realize that in the people who could be potential donors, they're people who have brain death and irreversible injury. They sometimes haven't had conversations with their families and they sometimes haven't had that critical opportunity to discuss organ donation and we know that we can do better. So our studies have demonstrated that to us and what we're you know, going out to the community to ask them is can they talk about organ donation because the bottom line is there are many people dying here without a chance mm -hmm. and we can save each other. And it's pretty amazing to see those stories of a donor and a recipient reuniting and, and meeting each other and just the appreciation that is there. When you have a look at some of the individuals who have made that contact, usually it occurs about a year after transplantation. Uh, for the donor families, they recognize, they see the individual living on and the recipient families forever, they are thankful. When we were down at St. George uh, just the other day, we had a young girl who'd received two liver transplants, not one because the first one failed and she res required a second. And they met the donor family and both parties realized the importance of one child living on with the opportunity provided through the unfortunate but important uh, generosity of mm -hmm. another child. Yeah, we've had those stories here on this newscast as well. Uh, you guys are doing some great things with your liver transplant program. Tell us about how that has worked. So what we've done is, you know, at last year we had a record year with an increase in the total number of transplants. And the other part is we've now done a thousand liver transplants at the uh, center. Now that in itself is a landmark, but for Utah the number of transplants being done in the state continues to increase because there is a desperate need because we have two diseases that are overly expressed in Utah over anywhere else and that's fatty liver disease and primary sclerosing cholangitis. So we have research studies specifically focusing upon trying to prevent those diseases coming to transplant. But here's the thing, even if you think you may have a uh compromised liver, you still may be eligible to donate. Oh, correct, because there are other organs that can be used in the kidney transplant program at the uh, Intermountain Medical Center has made incredible advances in the way it's looking at paired donation, living donation, mm -hmm. and as an individual who is well and you have organs and a, a person in need that you know living donations, the other aspect that's expanding across the country because, again, we have a large population in need. We've got a limited supply, mm -hmm. and we're exploring every endeavor to save lives. But even if a, a liver has hepatitis, you can cure it after and still oh, potentially use it. That big change occurred with these new therapies for hepatitis C mm -hmm. that everyone's heard about. They're near, virtually 100% effective, so we take diseased organs and place them into individuals, and we do it now in other areas, including there's consideration now for kidney transplant, there's mm -hmm. national trials on that, and heart transplant, where you can take a hepatitis C positive donor who's got the virus, and then after transplant, yeah. you treat them, and you can cure the liver, That's the kidney, amazing. and the heart. All right, thanks so much disease. for being here with us. We really appreciate it. You can get more information at yesutah.org. Where can we learn more about uh, IMC? We can look at that when you look at the Intermountain Medical Center. Just a simple mm -hmm. Google search will provide you that information. All right. Fantastic. Thanks for being here. Thank you very much. You bet. Coming up, Utah Valley University.